Jabo Ticaba is an exotic tropical fruit that originates in Brazil. It also seems to have quite a bit of frost tolerance and therefore may be adapted to most California gardens. I know it does well in my garden. So let's take a look at this tree. But first, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. So a little background information on the Jabo Ticaba tree, or as it's sometimes called, the Brazilian grape tree. The Jabo Ticaba is in the myrtle family and it grows these beautiful fruit on the trunks and limbs of the tree instead of at the, t the branch tips as some uh, fruit trees do. The tree is native to Brazil, as the name Brazilian grape tree would imply, uh, but it's also found in such places as Argentina, Paraguay, Peru, Bolivia, and well, you get the hint, it's in that area of South America. So yeah, it uh, is most likely to be eaten out of hand. The, the, the fruit is delicious, eaten out of hand, or it could be juiced and made into jams, or I understand they even make a wine out of it. As you can see, the fruit is grown on clusters on the branches and main trunk of the tree. One of the coolest things, this tree is a, makes a beautiful landscape tree, as well as a delicious fruit producing tree. Uh, the, they are related, they're in the myrtle family, so they're related to uh, one, the, one of the popular landscape trees, uh, the uh, crepe myrtle uh, you find growing in California. Um, but yeah, look at all the fruit that just uh, wraps itself around the trunk and branches. So this tree I have growing in my backyard was started about 25 years ago from a seed taken from a Sabara Jaboticaba fruit. I planted it in the ground and I did some moving from time to time to try to find the best location in my garden to grow it. And it turned out to be on the, believe it or not, the west side of uh, my fence where it sat. And it grew very, very slowly. Uh, 20 something years later, it finally got its first fruit. This is why I would highly recommend uh, someone who wants to grow this tree to buy an already established uh, air layered tree or maybe one that's been grafted. That way you don't have to wait so long for the tree to produce fruit like I did. You can find uh, grafted jaboticabas down in some of the nurseries in Southern California. They are a bit expensive, but sure beats waiting. So after, Man, I think this tree's, I want to say it's at least 25 years it's been in the ground, unprotected. I think that the lowest temperature that this thing has seen was probably about, oh, I would say in the low 20s. I'm not really sure. Probably back in the 90s, I think it, it got down into the low 20s in my backyard. And I don't protect any of my uh, trees, not at least with any type of artificial shelter or anything like that. And this tree probably on a regular winter probably experiences 26, 27, and it doesn't even phase it. Of course, this tree is bigger. Uh, when they're smaller, they may need a little bit of protection if you have a, a little bit colder climate. But this tree has made it through. It's been a uh, really tough guy. It's uh, just, just made it through every, every cold spell that we've had, and it's been unprotected. Very worth a worthwhile try for those that live in uh, California, Texas, maybe Arizona. It's my understanding that Jabuticaba like soil slightly on the acidic side. So I planted my tree directly into the native soil, which is a little alkaline. I amended the top layer of soil, the mulch layer, with peat moss, fir bark, and pine shavings about three years ago, and it seemed like that did wonders for the growth. I also started using this 
fertilizer, Holly Tone Organic Fertilizer. Uh, it, it's meant for acid-loving plants. And uh, this also seemed to make the, the tree leaves be much more greener than they had been. I also noticed that I had less um, insect da damage, which was a pleasant surprise. You, uh, whenever possible, I like to use organic fertilizer and I sprinkle it in and um, kind of mix it in to get to the uh, soil down below the uh, mulch layer. It's kind of important to do. And so I use about a cup, cup and a half of this fertilizer um, once a, in the spring and once in the fall and then I water it in really good. You want to keep these trees a little bit on the damp side, not soggy, because they have to be on good drained soil. But you want to keep them fairly wet. I, I water mine probably four or five times a week. So it looks like the fruit is starting to ripen. So I'm going to pick one of these Jabo Ticabas and I'll let you know how, what I think about it. First, we have to find one that's perfectly ripe. I mean, most of them ripen up at the same time, but as you can see, some of them are still got some green on it. And my goal is to find one that, uh, it's got no green on it. Like, oh, there's one that doesn't have any green on it. It's solid purple, as you can see. There we go. Let's see if we can get that in the camera. So yeah, we'll just take a quick taste test and I'll let you know what I think. Wow, I don't know if we can get this in the camera, but man, it's delicious. It's uh, somewhat reminiscent of a of a grape, but a little bit more sweeter. The skin is a little bit bitter, and uh, it has a hint of hint of like almost a little bit like eucalyptus flavor. So yeah, it's delicious. Once again, if you like this type of channel, go ahead and hit that like, the subscribe button, and you have a good day.